this is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian News. To be notified for the next video study or news report, simply click subscribe, then the bell, and you'll be notified. If you wish to get a better view of this video in horizontal HD on your phone, click at the top on the horizontal three buttons then look down in your phone and click on your browser. Then click the little square, white square at the bottom of the video. It'll open up in horizontal HD. Hello, God Saints bless. Church and believers as well as unbelievers. We are now going to do our Bible reading and study starting on January 10th. Now, I'm recording a day in advance, so I have just come back from church. I go to a church called Light and Life in Aberdeen, Washington, and Brad Hill, or Gill, is the pastor of that church. Uh, you can actually, if you are in this region, he is the president of uh, Christian Cable uh communications uh, channel 20 uh, runs TBN and many many uh, Christian programming uh, I've just started going there I've been there for about three or four months now and this is a man who is reading the scripture um, from the pulpit he preaches the word expositionally and exegetically and this is what I prefer, and this is uh, the way that the Lord has taught me and wants me to do. We want to fill ourselves up with the Word of God. I am Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries, and we're going to ask God to bless these readings. Father, I come to you now, and I ask you to bless these readings, Lord, that you will give us insight, precepts, and principles, Lord God, so that we can walk our life uh, out through your Holy Spirit and the way that you want us to be. Uh, I give you all the glory. I lift you up high. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I ask, Lord, that if there's anyone looking in that does not know you as Lord, that you will bless them and put in their heart the seed of wanting to become born again and that the Holy Spirit will woo the people that are listening in and, and watching in Jesus' blessed name. So let me get my glasses here. And so this will go in on, this is coming in on Monday the 10th, which is uh, the day that I start back to Liberty University. I'm in a PhD program, so I do know a little bit. I have a Master's of Divinity. And so uh, I think that's good enough for me to be able to read the Bible in front of you. Not your teacher, not your pastor. Okay. And I will admit my worldview, and I told my pastor today, my worldview is the United States. I believe that the United States has fallen very short. Um, the churches have fallen short. And uh, have pretty much missed it when we have to have people like Rodney Howard Brown come in and uh, give the gospel from South Africa. That tells me something. America needs to repent, and America needs the churches need to repent first. So we're going to go in our readings today. You might want to write this down. You look at the New King. Uh, the New ja uh, James, the New King James version of the Bible is what I'm reading out of. Uh, you can make sense out of it out of the um, King James version, but if you want to uh, read for pleasure, uh, go to your other translations. But we are reading near to the original that uh, is possible. Okay, we're reading Genesis 19 verses 1 through uh, chapter 20 to verse 18. We are reading Psalm 6, verses 1 through 5, Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 4, and Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. 
So let's begin. <clears throat> now, the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. Remember, uh, they had stopped at Abraham's tent, and um, Abraham had this discussion with God, and he had gotten God all the way down to ten people. If there's ten people, ten righteous, uh, would you please preserve the city? And I think my uh, spin on it is, or at least what I feel is, he knew Lot. And his family was over there. So it would have been Lot, his wife. We know he had two girls because of what happens later on in the story. But he, I believe he should have gone down to four people. Would God have listened to him if there were four righteous to not? Well, four, uh, I guess they could get four out of the city so that they could destroy it. Now, the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. Remember, there were three men, one and two angels. So God was with those two angels. Then the Lord departed and um, let the two angels go do the work. And Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Verse, and to, verse 2, and he said, here now, my lords, please man, uh, turn into my servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. So he is saying he has a house. He's not dwelling in a tent. He's not a, a tent dweller like Abraham is, is what we're seeing here. Now, if we look it up in the Hebrew, which I'm not going to do today, but you might want to remember in order to get these videos over to other countries, you must comment and you must give a like. If you do that, you are doing the Lord's work. You are uh, getting these up and out and suggested to other countries and to other people. Forget about me. This is the Word of God. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just reading it. And hopefully interpreting rightly some things. And so I'm using a clip here so I can hold these pages, which makes life a lot easier. And these angels said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. Three. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Verse 4, Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. What does that tell you? Every quarter? Everybody? Old and young? And five, and they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. Now that means sodomize. That is homosexuality. Six, so Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See now. Verse uh, 8, see now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come hither or under the shadow of my roof. Now, you want to read along in your Bible because the word hither is not in there. I added it accidentally. And believe me, there are words being added to the gospel uh, by some people that think that's a good idea. The Lord doesn't think that's a good idea. We're interpreting uh, from the Hebrew or the Greek. Verse 9, And they said, Stand back. Uh, then they said, This one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. That's interesting. I want to read that again. Verse 9, And they said, Stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Who is it that's acting like a judge? Somebody want to look, uh, do a study on that and find out? Now, we will deal worse with you than with them. 
So they pressed hard against the man, Lot, and came near to break down the door. So evidently they're saying that Lot is the one that's judging what they should do and what they should not do. 10. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. 11. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so they became weary trying to find the door. So who struck who blind? The angels. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. 11. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. So we know that this is an actual house. This isn't a tent because there's a door. 12. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place. 13. For we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. 14. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who had married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. So they're not righteous. 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. 17. So it looks almost like um, it says they took the hands of the two daughters, the, do uh, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside. They set him. It's possible it's almost like a translation, kind of like they were here and then they were there instantly. Uh, they weren't really having to walk. I think the angels carried them out. This is the way that um, we view the rapture. We will be carried out. Um, so it came to pass when they had brought, brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. 18. Then Lot said to them, Please, no, my lords. 19. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life, but I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. Verse 20. Now, see now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. So there must have been a city around Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, there were uh, three kings that Abraham had been having dealings with. So there evidently were these little suburb cities. 21, and he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, in that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. 23, hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. So he's sparing the other little city. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar, Z-O-A-R, 23. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Okay, wait a minute, hold it. Okay, here we go. 23. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. 24. Then the Lord raised brimstone, rained brimstone and fire in Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. 25. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife, in verse 26, looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. When you got saved, you left some things. Or you felt to leave some things. Did you ever have a time when you looked back or you went back? Uh, kind of, they call it backsliding. 27. And Abraham went early, but did, you didn't become a pillar of salt. 
uh, we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. We're not a pillar of salt, but we are considered the salt of the earth. Uh, we are to have salt so that what we say, uh, I guess salt will sting if it hits the eyes. I remember talking to somebody this morning. I asked them a question, and they I could tell that it had stung them. They wouldn't admit it, but it did sting them because they were not telling me the whole truth. And I won't tell you what I, the question was or who it was. But I watched their reaction. We sometimes evade the truth because it puts us under condemnation. But the Lord says, you are therefore under no condemnation. You who are in Christ Jesus. I'm not quite sure what scripture that is. We'll come to it. Um, but this person fell under condemnation and they tried to hedge and say, well, I do this, I do that. Um, but they were convicted and I could see it because they, you, you start seeing a person squirm. Um, the days are short. It's time for us to be pretty candid with people. If we see something we need to, uh, we're not accusing and we're not taking the plank, uh, uh, if we've already taken the plank out of our eye, then we need to be able to. But we can ask a question. We're not accusing. Asking a question is not accusing anybody. Are you this? Or have you that? Uh, da da da. Because I'd known the past history of this person. And I also kind of wanted to know where they starting to clean things up. And I could see that they were. But they're still struggling. And so I prayed with them. And that's what you do. You pray. Uh, earnestly. It says the prayers of a fervent man uh, produce much. And so on 27, and Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. 28, then he stood, looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw and behold the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. 29, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. 30. Then Lot went out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountains. Now I don't know why he did that. It could be because he no longer had a wife. She disobeyed the instruction. And his two daughters were with him for he was afraid to dwell in Zoar. And he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. 31. Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come in to us as the custom of all the earth. 32. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. Uh, 33. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay down. Or when she, let's see, lay with her father, and she did not know when he lay down or when she arose. And he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. That's incest. We don't do that today. Now, they did marry amongst themselves, but she was not married. That's still incest. 34. It happened on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. 35. Then they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. 36. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bore a son, the firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. Those are the Moabites. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. 38, and the younger, she also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. I don't know what was going on with these girls. That they did not know there were other people. 
on the earth? Did they not know that their dad Lot had Abraham as a brother that they could uh, they couldn't wait on the Lord? So we have the Moabites and we have the Ammonites. Was this God's will? How much do we cause a problem for our lives by going out of God's will? Do you really do we really believe that God wanted these two girls to make their father drunk? And the other thing is, how drunk do you have to be? To not know that somebody's having sex with you. And how could you possibly have sex with someone if they're drunk? What could have been going on there? I, I can't in my mind imagine this. This man was not partying with his daughters. Um, what was going on? 20. And we could go through this and do a whole study just on that that one verse those two verses uh, and it happens again of a different kind of drunkenness in Genesis so let me see did we already do that yes we did remember Noah's sons, Noah got drunk. And his one son uncovered him over here in Genesis that I have to reread because I don't have those up. I will have to do that at the end. As, uh, as soon as I have some time, I've got uh, two days that we are without. 20, chapter 20, And Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. 3, Now Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, Abimelech king of Gerar, was sent and took Sarah. These men are taking these women. And Sarah was how old? In her 90s? Three, but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. For But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Uh, five, did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of, of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. Uh, six, and God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Seven, now therefore restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. See the protection of God? When he has a plan, he will protect. And we need to stay within that plan. Eight. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things in their hearings. And the men were very much afraid. Nine. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you, that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. 18. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? 11. And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. 12. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. See? We're looking at this incest thing between Lot and his girls. Even Abraham knew that if this sister of his had been a daughter of his mother, as his, he could not marry her. Obviously, um, the sister was of another wife that his, fa that his father had. 
So that was perfectly okay. The bloodline is fine. Not incest. And he also is assuming that there's no righteousness in this land. You don't assume someone's not righteous until you examine their fruit. And he obviously assumed he was going to be killed and they were going to take his wife. Well, they did take his wife, but they didn't kill him. We don't assume. We are fruit inspectors, but we have to examine the whole tree, not our own perception of something. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. 13. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, this is your kindness that you should I do, that should do for me in every place. Wherever we go, say of me, he is my brother. 14. Then Abimelech took sheep oxen and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham and he restored Sarah his wife to him. 15. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. 16. Then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. She lied. She lied for her brother. Didn't we just see that um, uh, we're not to uh, lie or do something for our spouse or anyone that's not the truth? We, me we mentioned that in one of our last uh, studies. 17. So Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children. 18. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So he had to, he had to heal their wombs. Psalm 6, 1 through 5. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. 2. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, for I am weak. O oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. Re for return, O oh Lord, deliver me. O oh, save me for your miracles, mercy's sake. 5. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? In other words, if you, if you uh, slay me, I can't give you thanks in Sheol, so have mercy on me so I can continue worshiping you, Lord. Makes a lot of sense, you think? Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. 1. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. 2. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. For, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Well, of course, when, you, when God tells somebody to do something, the Jews took that literally and started taking leather bindings and cords of leather and literally doing this even on their heads and they had a, a, a piece of leather up here on their foreheads and it was over the top. And so it's referring to this in the spiritual and they took the spiritual and made it secular. Yes, the words were there, but even uh, you have um, the Azusa, or the, yeah, on your doorpost that has Deuteronomy 20, I think it is. And so they would even kiss that. Uh, a lot of ritual. Matthew 8, 1 through 17. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. 
2. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 3. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleaned, cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. 4. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way. Show yourself to the priests and offer the gift that, that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, 6. Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. 7. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy, that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Now, the thought occurred to me today, we have in our uh, prayer meeting Bible study a list of people that are on the page. I do believe that some of these people actually could come to church physically. They're using something, I don't know if it's fear or the COVID or an excuse to malinger. Nonetheless, I felt that they should be here so we could lay hands on them to be healed. But this shows, even if you're not going and putting your hands on the person as Jesus wanted to do for the centurion, faith, great faith, as this centurion had healed his servant. So why not, couldn't people that are not going to church, that are out of fear or whatever, we can knock that off of them and pray for them so they can be loosed so that they can come and have hands laid on them. It says, call upon the elder, anoint them, and have them anoint you with oil for healing. Affliction's a whole different thing. Affliction's coming from the devil. And affliction could come, and I, bottom line is, I keep telling everybody, please tithe. Please tithe. Keep the fowler away from your hen house. God promised is being in covenant with the Lord when you tithe. You are in covenant. He promises and he, he keeps his promise. He doesn't lie about it. It's not Old Testament. It is Bible. Nine. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes. And to another, go. Come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. 11. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. 12. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into utter darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So what you believe will be done to you in Jesus' name or for you. 14. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. Verse 15. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, demon and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled when he was when it was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying Isaiah or Isaiah he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses so i turn all my sicknesses right now in Jesus name over to the lord put them in suitcases i hand them over by my by the spirit here i can't handle it i don't want it it's not for me. I don't need or this or anything else that they're proposing. When I 
have a problem, I go to the Lord. Um, I'm going to keep this out. I think a lot of you people realize what I'm saying. Physicians have changed. Health services have changed. Um, we no longer really have doctors. We have physician's assistants. And they will do what they will do according to what the law says now. And so you're either going to trust in the law or you're going to trust in Christ. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. In other words, I am the law now. I am the one. I am your Lord. I am your uh, protector. I am your sustenance. I am your all in all. And if you depend on me, you will have what you say. I'm going to go ahead and say the Lord, uh, uh, give a uh, prayer of salvation and then the benediction. For those who want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, please repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned. I repent. I believe in my heart you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. Jesus, I receive your forgiveness and by your blood I am saved in your holy blessed name Jesus amen and if you did pray the prayer in the comments section write you prayed the prayer or you are saved then please go to you and him ministries.com website and tell us in the email or chat section at the bottom of the website that you got saved and we'll send you a Bible if you need one or any other helps that are available you will not go on anyone else's mailing list. Also, if you wish, call me personally at 833-726-8255 or 833-PAM-TALKS. Go to you and him ministries, uh, dot com. You can go again into that chat, chat section or you can email me at pam at you and him ministries dot com. Now I'm going to say the benediction, which we now are learning is Jude. 1, 24, and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And let me see how I can get back into... Let me close this up. I want to wish you a very blessed day. And thank you for reading the word with me. Please, even if you can only get halfway through, please comment. Do a like so that we can have the analytics and these bot, uh, uh, bot shadowing can be uh, alleviated and we can get the Bible reading out to everyone who needs that. We will become, by the end of the 365 days, we will become walking words. All right. God bless you and you have, please be saved, healed, and delivered. And if you need anything, you know how to contact me. God bless. This is Sister Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministry, signing off. And you have a blessed week. Day. I'll see you tomorrow on the 11th, January the 11th, 2022.